Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Off-Road Hub. My name is Ken. If you're new to the channel or you've been following along, thank you for joining me today. I'm going to continue uh, the process, the very long process, of converting my 2010 Toyota FJ Cruiser to solid axles, one-ton axles to be specific, out of a F350 um, and 42-inch tires and all that kind of crazy stuff. In today's video, I'm going to continue where I left off last time, and that is replacing the cross member that supported the transfer case and the transmission with a new one. So here you can see the old uh, cross member, and this is my new cross member, which also doubles as a skid plate. And this is my dog, Sola. She's a Labradoodle. Hello, Sola. So I talked about this in my last video, but I'll go over it again really quick in this one as well. I'm replacing the cross member that went from here over to there because my three link uh, link mounts need to go through this location. Um, and also, I don't think the uh, old cross member would play well with the location of the new drive shaft that's going to be going down to the front axle. Um, it's going to mount right here on either side to these 3 16 steel plates that I installed on both sides to reinforce the frame. And it's going to be, it'll come back here to the back of the Atlas and then cover uh, starting up on the oil pan. And then later on in the build, I'll continue that skid, the, those skid plates further forward to protect the rest of the transmission pan and the oil pan. So on the old cross member, um, the transmission mount just went in that spot right there. I'm going to reuse this transmission mount and I'll actually cut this out of the old cross member and then weld that onto the new cross member uh, just because it'll be a lot easier that way. And as I mentioned in my last video, the back of the Atlas will be supported uh, with this TMR um, Atlas mount. This just clamps around the back of the Atlas and uh, supports it real well. It's uh, got some rubber mounts here so that it can move just a little bit because the drivetrain needs to do that. So picking up where we left off last time, imagine this is the frame. This is my brace that's going to connect to the frame uh, with some 5 8 bolts going through. And the way this is going to connect to the frame is I'm going to build um, some brackets that are going to go something like this down from the frame and then bolt onto here. So I need to get some holes drilled into these plates, all four of them, uh, to match the holes in my braces. So I was trying to figure out the best way to uh, get holes in these pieces to match the holes in these pieces. And um, I guess the best way is probably going to be to use some paint. Let's see how these marks turned out. Hmm. Those are almost usable. I can kind of see where the circles are. I can match this up with these washers. Hit it with a splash of paint. Get some better marks. There's a lot of eyeballing going on. I'll probably be pretty close.
think I hit a pocket of adamantium in this uh, steel. I just, <laughs> I've gone through three bits in the last uh, five minutes trying to get through this hole. I don't know what the heck is going on here. Drill bit number four. <laughs> I do not know how this is possible. So I tried drilling it from the other side. Still can't drill through it. Four drill bits. Can't make a hole in this 3 16th steel. Ha! Uh, if you know how that happens, let me know in the comments. All right, brand new drill bit. I'm gonna take it easy on it. I don't understand what's going on here. All right, I made it through the invincible steel. What the heck? All right, there they are. Bolts go through both sides, all good to go. Uh, now I just need to cut a 45 degree angle on these so that they match the uh, brace and uh, then we'll be one step closer. Um, I cut one 45 degree angle here, but then I decided that it's probably gonna be best to tack these together as brackets and then cut these off together so that they're even and um, yeah, everything matches up. So I'm gonna tack these up and then cut the 45s. I've got my 45s cut on my brackets here and so uh, I'm ready to weld these up. All right guys, they're all welded up. They look pretty good. Not bad if I do say so myself. It's gonna be really strong. No doubt about that. Looking good. Uh, so the next step is just to get these uh, brackets uh, tacked up to the frame and get these braces tacked up to the uh, skid plate slash cross member so um, we can get this thing under the vehicle. All right, well, I got it all tacked up in there. So you can see on both sides there. That's just, uh, I raised it up with the transmission jack. But uh, yeah, it's all up in there. So I'll just, now I'll just pull down the, uh, this part with the braces, weld those up, finish welding up the brackets that are on the frame. And then it'll be in. Well, there it is, it's finally in. Bolts are in the holes, but not tightened. But um, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It looks really good, it looks really strong. It's uh, level, so it's not all scatty wampus. It's centered, pretty happy about it. These brackets, I think, are pretty beefy. Um, beefier than some of the setups I've seen, so. I think they will do the job well. So now that this is in there on its own, I can uh, get the Atlas mount back here and get the transmission mount in up there. Now before I removed the factory cross member, 
the end of this shaft, the outfit shaft on the back of the Atlas was exactly four inches from the bottom of the vehicle there. And so I've got it reset at four inches. And if you recall, I mentioned that I maybe wanted it a half inch lower. So set at four right now, when I put the transmission mount back on uh, at its current level and release the jack, I predict that it's gonna come down a quarter to a half inch. So that'll get me the the half inch of extra clearance for the Atlas that I was looking for. At least that's the plan. I'm going to cut this transmission mount out of the old cross member just so I don't have to reinvent uh, this mount. The holes are already there in the right diameters and places, so I'm going to try to salvage this out of this cross member. So here's the transmission mount. It's just uh, bolted to the transmission right now. And right below it is the new uh, cross member slash skid plate. And so this distance right here is two and an eighth inches. So I just need to take that piece that I cut off of the original factory cross member, make sure it's two and an eighth inches tall and in the right spot and uh, it should all work out perfectly. All right, so I got this thing underneath the transmission, underneath the vehicle, so I know that this is where it needs to be. I took my welder and hot glued it so it wouldn't move. And then uh, took my soapstone, marked where these holes are and where the perimeter of this is. So now I need to cut a hole that is um, a little bit bigger than the square of these bolt holes because this, the bolts for the transmission go into these from underneath. So I need to cut a hole in the three eighths and then I need to weld this uh, bracket to the uh, cross member skid plate at the right height, which was two and an eighth inches. There we go. So I need to cut a square somewhere inside this square, something like that. There's my window cut out for the bolts that come up underneath the transmission mount and then I've got these side cutouts that are going to be the supports for the new transmission mount and of course the transmission mount that came off of the factory cross member and remember it had to be two and an eighth inches two and an eighth inches high so that's where I've got it I've got uh, some washers and magnets and another piece of metal stacked under there to make it two and an eighth inches and uh, so now we'll get this probably just tacked up and then double check it and then get it welded up. So I cleaned this up a little bit. It looks pretty good now. Not bad at all. Turned out really good. Uh, now the transmission is a pretty high stress thing. It actually twists and turns and jumps around a lot. So this needs to be pretty strong. And I think it is pretty strong, but I'm gonna put a couple reinforcement plates on it. Just one on the front and uh, one on the back, just uh, to make it stronger because it really can't be too strong. All 
All right, I am pretty certain that that is gonna hold up. For sure. So now I'll set this on top of my uh, cross member and jack it up, get it under the transmission and get it lined up. And then I'll tack it to make sure it's in the right spot, lower it back down, bring it back to the bench and weld it onto the cross member. So it's sitting in place right here. Uh, the transmission is bolted to it. Oh, there they are, yep. Uh, so it should be in the right place. And so I'm just gonna tack it in uh, place here and then pull it back out and finish welding it up. So this is interesting. Uh, I had this thing bolted in and I tack welded it and I put it back up on the bench and it didn't look right. So I brought it back under here and now the holes aren't lining up exactly, which seems kind of impossible because it was bolted up when I tacked it in place. It's still tacked in place, but now the holes don't line up. This is all part of the, all part of the game. <laughs> Well guys, it didn't quite get done in this one. I thought it would. Uh, on Monday, I thought it would when I said, hey, I'll get this done for you on Thursday. But, eh, you know, these things take a lot of time. There's a lot of work involved, a lot of figuring out how to make things work. Anyways, I'm having fun and I'm getting close to the next step. Literally the next step after getting this cross member in and the Atlas support in is uh, bringing in the axles and tires and getting that all mocked up. It's gonna be, I mean, then it's really going to seem exciting. It's going to seem real. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already so I can share new content with you every Monday and Thursday. And we'll see you next time.